What's also interesting here is the level of, of, of weeds that are in the, the margin. These margins were not sprayed in the autumn, but what it does tell us and what it probably helps us with is weed identification for certain weeds that, that may become a problem in the field in the future that may even need a clean up in the spring. If we actually go down into the margin and actually have a look what we're actually dealing with, uh, this is a speedwell. Uh, quite a big issue on this farm. Um, this was once been able to be controlled through the use of Stellox uh, or Oxytrill, which is now removed. Um, the method of controlling this now, particularly in, in, in spring crops and even in oats, is through the use of an SU containing something like Tribenuron or Metsulfuron. Uh, personally speaking, I think Cameo Max or Thor is quite excellent in controlling this. What's also interesting is we have a brassica present here. Uh, to me, this is a, a runch, uh, a runch, more than likely a runch. This can be easily identified by the by the rough nature of its leaf. Again, very very easy to kill. And what we also have is ground cell. This is clearly identifiable through its yellow flowers and its almost spiky nature. This is one of the weeds that really filters through the net after an autumn herbicide, very easily to control through the use of, of Tribenuron again, which is, which is a really ideal spring follow-up herbicide. Uh, what we also have, funny enough, is a fumatry. Uh, big issue in parts of the country. Not the most competitive weed in the world, but again, one you'd like to keep out of your crop. Similar to ground cell, the big issue with ground cell is when it goes to seed, Again, it's not a yield robber. Fumatry also easily controlled through the use of Tribenuron, which makes product choice when trying to clean up winter barley that bit easier, as the same product will control both weeds. This weed, which, which everyone will probably recognize, is a cleaver. Tends to spread from headlands outwards. Again, the use of a headland margin will really help in the management of these type of weeds. Um, the herbicide of choice to control cleavers is Fluoxypyr. This is contained in products like, like Hurler, uh, Reaper, Galaxy will also control it. Now, as I said, this, this crop of winter barley adjacent to us here would have received an autumn herbicide. Uh, it is yet to receive a wild oat spray. It's yet to receive a herbicide. Um, but if we take a walk in, it will be interesting to see have any of these weeds actually manifested themselves within the field or has the autumn herbicide actually controlled these. If we take a, take a peek down into the crop, you can see that there is, there is little to no weeds to be seen. Again, I, I'll take a bigger crop, walk across the crop and we, we can make more of a clearer judgment. This crop received a pre-emergence herbicide as opposed to a post-emergence herbicide in the autumn. What's funny is this field actually, we've we done a bit of a trial in it. We used two products. Uh, one product we used was Firebird, which is Flufenicid based. The second product we used was Flight. To me, there was very, very little between both products. Um, again, it comes back to the message when using pre-emergence herbicides. You really cannot beat going out early. And, 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 and using a pre-emergence strategy to control your, 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 your weeds and your winter cereals as opposed to a post-emergence strategy. That's reinforced now more so than ever with, uh, with the removal of IPU. Um, so again, more and more tillage farmers are going to be, I suppose forced is the wrong word, but they're going to be, to be made head down a pre-emergence route. But as you can see from the condition of the crop relative to the level of weeds we've seen in the neighboring margin, Pre-emergence herbicides are, are, are well worth it. Very, very good. The control has been fantastic. Use of a wild oat spray will have to be considered next week. Now, this is not a wild oat, and this is clearly obvious due to the direction which the leaf sheet is going around the stem. But again, volunteer oats are a yield robber, and this will have to be taken out through the use of of axial uh, either within with the T1 fungicide and PGR or on its own. 
again, that's a decision which will have to be made on conditions next week and what else we, we, we decide to put into the tank. At the moment, there's no concrete decision made on that. You know, you can clearly see that mildew is low in the crop. There is high levels of net blotch. Rinko is, is starting to creep up in it. That does mean that protoya will be in the tank. There is a question mark over the use of amorphaline in this crop at the moment. Again, that decision will be made closer to the time if, 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 if mildew is present. Um, another point worth noting is that if there's, if there's little weeds like, like ground cell or speedwell or cleavers that have to be cleaned up, now's the time to do it. Um, you, can, you can add your SU, let that be your Cameo Max, your Calibre Max, your, your Presite Max uh, to your wild oat spray, there's no problem there. Um, and that, that's also something to be considered. In this crop, after taking a good walk across the field, there's no follow-up spring herbicide required.